Well, hello, my friends in Texas and around the South. Welcome to the weekly water outlook. Once again, very dry across the state of Texas. Most of the state received no rain whatsoever last week, as you all know. You know, I've been looking out about as far as I can go with the medium range models, trying to find any hint that we might see a change that would bring more rain. Now temperatures will be changing this week. We're going to have a tightening of the temperature gradient. Some cold air will be seeping into the deep south, uh, mainly Oklahoma and parts of Texas. There will be some rain close by, uh, mainly over Arkansas and far eastern Texas, but we've seen that story before. That's going to leave most of the state once again high and dry. But I will be discussing how the Arctic Oscillation in its negative phase will be impacting precipitation trends across the region. And if there's any sign of a change to this pattern, not just this week, but over the next several weeks as well. Stay tuned. Here's a story as far as rainfall over the last week and what we see here over uh, Texas and Oklahoma. Really no rain of significance. There's some rain over the Texas uh, eastern uh, and southeast coast. Uh, fairly modest, but I think the story, once again, another week with no significant rain over almost all the state of Texas, over almost all of Oklahoma. Then as we got off further east across Arkansas and Louisiana, it picked up significantly. Nothing all that impressive. The green is only about a half inch to an inch. Uh, more significant in the areas in yellow, that's a couple inches of rain. And we've seen this pattern for quite some time. Uh, this is definitely both a climatologically uh, typical pattern to have more rain over those areas east. But as I mentioned last week, uh, even though it's drier over central and west Texas, to have this extent of no rain is definitely quite unusual. So we see the percent of normal rainfall for the last week is well below normal over just about the entire region of Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, matter of fact, significantly below normal with 25% of normal uh, rainfall anomalies for the week and most of the area actually 0% of normal for the entire week. Thought I'd take a quick review of stream flow over the region and what we see is for the most part we see below normal stream flow. Um, it's a bit scattered with some river basins experiencing normal stream flow levels for this time. Most of them are below normal. Uh, the, uh, the orange color is 10 to 24 percent normal but the more extreme below normal stream flow are indicated in that maroon color and that's only 10 percent of normal or less. So the drought monitor was updated over the last week, and the current um, more extreme drought, the red, um, is uh, about 28.3% for the region, but it really varies from state. Oklahoma is hardest hit with 90.5% of the state in more extensive drought, that red, that D3 or D4, and that's a really incredible. Uh, very severe conditions and impacts due to drought over Oklahoma. Texas is uh, quite a bit less, 27.40. Uh, drought impacts, um, and uh, Arkansas is 23.78%. Uh, so Oklahoma definitely the most uh, drought impacted, as well as the northern part of Texas. But that's not to say that there aren't drought impacts over the entire area. It's definitely been trending very much drier. Soils are very uh, much dry over pretty much the entire state of Texas. And we don't see a whole lot of improvement if we look at the percentages um, comparing the trends over the last week in soil moisture. Um, most likely uh, due to temperature not quite as warm as areas to the east is that soil moisture didn't dry out quite as much over the last week. But we definitely don't see any blue which would indicate soils were getting wetter. And we do see some pockets over the last week of some uh, brown, which is indicating it's getting drier. Now this time of year you would expect it to be very modest, these changes, very slow uh, for the most part unless it became unusually warm um, or it rained and then we could see some significant improvement. So for the most part um, from soil moisture over the last week a very slow uh, decrease in soil moisture I think was the story across most of the region. I've talked about the Arctic Oscillation and the North Atlantic Oscillation for the last couple weeks. Uh, you can see in this graph here that it did go uh, into a negative phase here. Below this line here is negative. Uh, it's generally forecast to remain negative for the, through the middle of the month. And um, I want to talk a little bit about what that means with the Arctic Oscillation. It generally means there's an imbalance in atmospheric pressure and it's prone towards colder air sagging south. 
Now, this doesn't mean it's going to be all the cold air moves south. It means that there could be a lag between going into a negative and cold air moving south. But, and I also think it means that there'll be pulses of Arctic air, just not always just a whole uh, region of Arctic air. So I think that's going to be the story as we look ahead in the next couple weeks. The big picture shows an area of low pressure, and that's going to be the dominant feature. And what we're going to see is just pulses of cold air uh, sagging south and then pulling up towards the north again over the next couple weeks. I think what will be somewhat unusual with this negative phase of the Arctic Oscillation is that the pooling of cold air will primarily be over the upper Midwest and then sagging down into the central part of the country versus lots of times the mean position of this cold air is further east. So parts of Kansas and Nebraska, uh, Colorado, and then further north will be getting more cold air more likely than the mid-Atlantic coast. And what you can see is the blue is a jet stream early and the uh, yellow is late in the week. And we're going to have reinforcing areas of colder air pushing down from time to time. And I wanted to show a little bit as far as temperatures go. The areas in blue are forecast temperatures as of midweek, with the uh, coldest temperatures are blue and the warmer temperatures, um, yellow and red are the warmer temperatures. And you can sort of see where the coldest air will be this week. That's another reason why, even though this could be very dry, soil moisture will be changing very slowly versus areas in yellow, which are warmer and areas over the southeast U.S., the drought has been expanding quicker because the evaporation has been a bit high in that region with temperatures still in the 70s. So even though it's going to be very dry, the overall changes will be somewhat modest. So the trends and threats this week, once again, well below normal precipitation, widespread 25% or less um, rainfall over most of Oklahoma, most of Texas, um, I think that the area of rain along the boundary of that thermal, uh, you know, between the cold and dry air um, and the, the cold and uh, warmer air um, could extend into the far eastern parts of Texas and a good part of Arkansas. That's that pattern we've seen for some time. And in that band there near and within that yellow area, about a, a quarter inch to one and a half inches of rainfall. Uh, that's that pattern we've seen. This hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, and that looks like that will continue for some time. Matter of fact, uh, looking at that long-term model that I show uh, quite often here, uh, this goes out into the medium range models about as far as we get into the medium range. After a medium range model, we get into the climate type models. Um, and what we see here is, again, that uh, very tight gradient here where any significant rain looks like it's going to be um, hugging uh, the areas of far eastern Texas and Oklahoma and then the anywhere from the central part of the state to the entire west and up through most of Oklahoma and Kansas looks to remain very dry through the period. Now, I do put this out from time to time. This is trying to pick up any trends that I might see as far as going through transition periods um, and switching over from a dry trend to a wet trend. Right now, I just don't see that over most of the uh, Texas and surrounding area. Um, right now, I think Oklahoma or um, Arkansas and parts of Louisiana uh, are, are more in the normal range. I wouldn't necessarily call it a wet trend. So I think right now, I'm going to continue to keep it dry through the rest of the month. Um, I will be keeping an eye on that. That could change um, maybe later in December. But right now, um, I really don't see any clear signs that it would be changing. So the takeaway points, once again, most of the region will remain dry, alternating pulses of colder air due to that negative AO. So temperatures will be cooler than we've seen for some time. There will be a narrow band of enhanced precipitation over eastern regions, Arkansas, far eastern Texas. Rest of the area pretty quiet and dry with continued soil moisture deficits and drought impacts. Thank you for listening to this week's briefing. I will be updating this in about a week.